So good morning, everyone. This is Ria Wang again. I'm your host, Transformation uh, Podcast, Healing Podcast. So in this podcast, I interview all of my amazing guests from all over the world. They are here to uh, share the stories, share the wisdom, then also share how do they overcome the challenge, become who they are today. They, they are here to give you the uh, encouragement, empowerment, and the inspiration. Uh, that is a help that who's listening here, who can get some tips that help you living in your daily life. Today, my amazing guest, Maria. Maria, Maria. So welcome to my podcast. Please, oh, I want to introduce Maria a little bit, just a little bit, then we'll let her share more about who she is. Maria is, did I say your name correct, Maria? Yes, Maria. Maria is um, um, uh, the meditation teacher. Also, Maria, you say your meditation also is a well-being coach. Mm -hmm. So Maria, would you like to introduce a little bit more about you? What do you mean when you say well-being coach? Yeah, so um, thanks for having me, Ria. I appreciate it. And good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Good evening, depending on where you're zooming in from. So. Um, yeah, my journey um, was a long one to become um, a meditation teacher, well-being coach, as well as a breath coach. And so what I do with my clients is I incorporate a lot of different modalities I've learned over the course um, of my journey into um, some concise um, pieces. And so my most recent certification work that I'm in is in the um, Chopra Global. So I'll be finishing up with that in a few weeks here. Um, and that's of course how we wet, met. So that's a beautiful uh, outcome of that as well, Ria. Um, but yeah, so I help people who are looking to go from one place in their life to another. So um, rather than looking necessarily backwards and going back to heal old stuff, it's more looking at where we're at today and where we want to go. So that could be career-wise, it could be health-wise, it could be relationship-wise, whatever the particular um, subject matter is. Um, and then I also uh, focus on helping, in particular, kind of my specialty is helping um, working parents who struggle with anxiety and who are time strapped, which you know are most working parents. Um, when you have little time for yourself to do some of these modalities, I've um, kind of specialized in condensing them into small um, digestible bites that um, give you practices and techniques to help manage anxiety basically. And so that's um, part of what I do with my Take Five business, so. That's wonderful, Maria, I think that in the now the society, especially the COVID time, we all feel that anxiety, right? We all, uh, especially some people, are raising a lot of fear, a lot of stress in the daily life. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing the things you do the job, you do the work to help people to go release that part things. I think also it's amazing we are both in the Chopra Deepas that program and we meet the people from all over the world. So such amazing spiritual beings we all are together. Mm -hmm. So I'm really blessed to have you on this show to share your work and to help others make the world better. Mm. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. So. Yes, I wanted to ask, uh, we always say who you become, who you are, is all come from your stories. Mm -hmm. So we talk about the stories today. Okay. So how do you find, uh, how do you start with you into, into this, this work? Um, so I started uh, on this path really when I was, when I first realized that um, anxiety was something I was actually diagnosed with in terms of generalized anxiety disorder. And so that would have been about, oh, a little over a decade ago, maybe about uh, 12 years or so ago. And at the time, 
I didn't realize I had anxiety, but at the time, a neurologist I was working with, Dr. Wolf at Wolf Epilepsy Center, he had said, you know, I think, which at the time we thought were for seizures, and that, that goes back further to more of my story, but that we think these are triggered actually by anxiety. And so I thought, what the heck is this guy talking about? I don't have anxiety. Um, and then the more I learned, the more I realized by by all means I do. So uh, it took me a while to even digest that diagnosis. But as soon as I did hear the word and initially was prescribed some pharmaceuticals to help with it, I started searching out um, methods to help me manage it. Um, because at the time, if I could find a, a way to manage and control the anxiety, then that might then in fact manage and control or prevent in this case an oncoming grand mal seizure and so for me that's what started me down the path um i started out actually found a um dr andrew wheel i don't know if you're familiar with him but he um is the one that brought one particular breathing practice a four seven eight breath mainstream and so that's the first um breathing practice that i started out with and that was oh over 10 years ago um, and it's still to this day, one of my uh, emergency breaths, or it's a practice that I can use when I'm in a moment of um, anticipation, excitement, anxiety, where I need to lower um, my heart rate or drop into more of a parasympathetic nervous system. So that's kind of what started me on the journey. And then through learning a lot about uh, different modalities and getting my uh, yoga teacher certification and then going on to additional certifications, looking at the nervous system, um, looking at the uh, neuroscience aspect of um, how we're wired and how the brain reacts to stimuli. So I, I just kept digging further and further and further. And what I found in this process is I learned that the techniques that I'd been using for about, you know, let's say about, it was about eight years at the time to manage my, what was then later re-diagnosed as a nervous system dysfunction or, or dysautonomia, um, that those were techniques that I was using to manage my anxiety, but at the same time, they were managing this other nervous system dysfunction. And it's not that bizarre because they're connected, right? The, um, in terms of everything stems from that parasympathetic and sympathetic um, balance or imbalance in a lot of cases. And so that's what started me on the journey. Um, I was doing that on the side, teaching you know yoga on the side and um, doing a lot of studying, but was still working full-time in the software industry. And then the beauty of, or the silver lining, let's say in COVID in my case was that as a result of um, COVID hitting the US, the company I was working for, who was based out of New Zealand, decided to pull out of the US. So I had to lay off the team that was working for me and then um, was laid off myself. And so here I was at this crossroads, what am I gonna do, right? And so I can go back into what was maybe safe, expected income, right? The way that I had, um, been raised, you know, you go, you continue to produce, perform, go up the corporate ladder, all those things. Um, or I could use this as an opportunity to transition. And in a lot of self analysis and what I was looking at in terms of the world around me as uh, people that I loved and people that were in my sphere of influence were kind of getting riddled with fear and being um, just so concerned that they were gonna lose their jobs or that they, this was gonna happen to them and they were living in this, this, this fear sphere, if you will. I was kind of floating on top of that within a bubble. And I attribute through a lot of self-analysis that you know, people would be asking me, how are you staying so you know, chill through all this? I'd be freaking out if I just got laid off and you know, this and that and the other is happening in life. And I said, oh, it's you know, I attribute it to my meditation practice, all the practices that I was doing at the time. So that's when I decided to go a little bit further and go on a year long journey through the um, Chopra program after doing a few other programmings like programs like a, a breath coach certification and, and some others that were focused on uh, mental health and uh, managing um, symptoms of anxiety through yoga and breath work. So, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the long and short story of what brought me here <laughs> to where I met today, so.
Wow, I bet that is a big shift. You know, mm -hmm. switch the job, then going to the new things. Um, I know anxiety is most is come from fear. Then fear beginning. I have that experience many years ago. I was in the really stressful daily life. Mm -hmm. Then I have the start with anxiety, then getting worse, then become panic attack. Mm -hmm. I was called a 911. Then I, my high blood pressure was 235. Mm -hmm. So I go to really the anxiety that time was really big. I couldn't have the normal, the daily life. Mm -hmm. So that take me a long way to shift, to become today, to release our anxiety. That now is also is my passion to to help now the people also invite some some guests like you come to here to mm -hmm. share your stories, also share your knowledge. How do you help the people? Help yourself, help mm -hmm. other people to overcome your challenging to release that anxiety. So we know to release anxiety, help anxiety, have many different tools. Mm -hmm. But here I would like you share one simple tool, maybe doing a little bit of breath work, if sure. that is okay with you, then share a little bit of that with us, then to help anybody here or anybody who's listening to this, then yeah. get something help them when they get anxiety or even just a little stress yeah. and we can use that mm -hmm. as benefits. Sure. Yeah. yeah, we can do that. And I think I'll choose one that um, would work for any age group. Because if you look at, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious as adults, what type of anxiety and stresses we have, right? But what I'm seeing right now in my sphere is that there's a lot of kids struggling with anxiety with the current pandemic and whatnot. And you know what you mentioned, Rhea, in terms of uh, living in fear before anxiety, rooting from fear. If I go back into my early childhood, because I started having these um, seizures, if you will, which were later, well, later re-diagnosed, but um, I never knew when they were going to happen. And so I I walked in fear daily, not knowing when this was going to come up. And so I think it was so ingrained in me. And that's just one example. But if you look at now these kids that are born during this pandemic um, or that have lived through it, is that they're used to now this constant level of what what's the next thing that's going to happen? What's the next variant? Are we going to have to get something else? You know, what are we going to be able to go back to school? Do we have to mask all this stuff? So it's a lot, right? It's a lot on. Um, these beings that are just starting their journeys. So um, the breath is such a powerful tool because it helps us reset our nervous system. So if you think about how you are just um, in a normal day breathing, you don't really think about it. You know, we, we, we breathe and we kind of take it for granted. But what happens is when we're in a moment of anxiety or in panic, oftentimes the breath will get short and up in the chest and it'll be constricted. So one of the ways to really easily drop into a, um, a longer breath cycle is just a practice where we extend the exhale. And so there's different breathing practices or pranayama practices where you extend the inhales. There's some where you know, it's sequential. There's some where you extend the exhales. And when we work with extending the exhales, those have a more calming effect versus some of the breathing practices that have a more energizing effect. Um, so we'll just start with a little short breathing practice. And so I encourage you, you know, sometimes to, in order to really get into your body, you can close your eyes, but oftentimes we're not in a situation where we feel comfortable closing your eyes. So whatever works for those that are here with us, and I would just say if the eyes are open, just keep them soft, almost like you're a little tired and you're trying to keep the eyes, you know, just fluttering open. And we'll just start. So I start every practice with just doing a little awareness. And so just noticing how we're feeling. And just notice if you might be holding maybe some tension in the neck and the shoulders. I work a lot with people helping them release tension in those areas. And I just want you to just notice the breath initially. And so by notice, I mean, maybe you can sense its temperature as it goes in the nose and out of the nose. 
And maybe you can notice its movement in the body. And maybe you can feel the chest rise and fall. Or maybe you feel it going deeper into the belly. And just maybe now noticing, is there a pattern or a specific cadence in the breath? So we're just gonna extend the exhale a bit. So we'll start with just a regular breath cycle, just however you're normally breathing. And then take an inhale through the nostrils, unless you're congested, I'd recommend through the nose. And then exhaling through the mouth. And now I'm going to count on the next few here, just to give you a sense of what it might feel like to extend that breath. So just noticing how you're feeling in this moment. And then we're going to inhale for two, three, and exhale for two, three, four, five. Allowing the inhale to come naturally. Three, and exhaling a little bit longer than the inhale. Four, five. Inhaling, feeling that serenity come in. And exhaling, slowly releasing any tension, releasing any tense. Inhaling, two, three, and exhaling, two, three, four, five. Let's do that one more time, inhaling, feeling the air come in the nostrils. And this time, exhaling as long as you possibly can, releasing every last bit of air. And then just allowing the breath to come back to its normal cadence. And I just want you to notice. Just notice how you're feeling. Notice maybe a shift. And whenever you're ready, opening your eyes. So just noticing where you have a state that you're in right now, very relaxed and calm state. How are you feeling? Oh, <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> so, you know, I started my morning with, with courses, study, coaching, and uh, with clients. Then think about having this podcast show also. So all the things getting so busy, busy, running, running, running. So now I feel so much grounded mm. and be the present. Yeah. Sometimes I think even I'm the, I'm the meditation teacher, but sometimes I getting cut off in my own world and forgot how the just simple breathing exercise is yeah. powerful. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes we need to slow down to speed up, right? So I yeah. think it's it's one of those things where I know I found myself in the hamster wheel of productivity, you know, working, taking care of kids, taking care of aging parents, trying to take care of my own, you know, health, all those things. And so you get so wrapped up in the doing, doing, doing that um, you're not necessarily just being. And so sometimes um, when we slow down and, and in my experience, you know, breathing practices are just one, one piece of a lot of different pieces that go into my pie of well being, Um, and it really takes quite a few, but the breath 
is the quickest way to get into the body. It's the quickest way to stop um, the rushing and the, 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 maybe the chaotic monkey mind, if you will, is to just notice and then slow it down. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities, I think, to use this within, um, within schools, within workplaces, um, so the, the take five um, stretch and breath breaks that I do for my members is basically five minutes. They're always five minutes. And so five days a week, a new one's released. And they're designed to be um, five minutes or less focusing on either a different breathing practice or sometimes we just release neck and shoulder tension. But it always starts with a grounding and just noticing how we're feeling because I'm really a strong advocate of just if you can start with five minutes. Um, you know, that that's huge because as we stack our days, a lot of times, even if we have, let's say a morning meditation practice or an evening wind down practice, it's during the day when things get chaotic that we might find ourselves more reactive or succumbing to anxieties. And as a result, making fear-based decisions rather than, um, you know, love-based decisions. And so I think incorporating little five minute breaks, if you will, to just connect with the break breath um, and connect with the body is really powerful so that's beautiful said i think even little five minutes i think everybody can do five minutes breathing exercise right so without the breathing so we don't have life anymore mm. so that breathing how ex how important it is that's you talk about the breathing important make me think about the 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 one time I was traveling in Tibet, then in the in the monastery I see the bunch young monk in there. Then one young monk was teaching. I was really curiosity to ask them. So what you are teaching? Then the younger I think that the monk probably just seven eight years old. Mm -hmm. Then he said, "I'm teaching breathing. How to breathe." I said, wow, how are you teaching is that? Why are you teaching that? Mm -hmm. Then he's, I, I can't believe he's that young. Then he, he talked like an old soul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, that is the only thing we cannot live without that. So breathing exercise is every day we need to breathe. Mm -hmm. So that's what he teaching every day. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, it's free, right? It's a freely available tool it's always available to us. We're never without it. Right. And it, and it works so instantaneously for, so I'll give you an example for um, those that struggle with anxiety and are maybe on a pharmaceutical, like a lorazepam or an Ativan or something that's kind of an emergency mm -hmm. um, pharmaceutical, which I was for a time, those take a while to kick in the body. Well, my breath, I can drop into a breathing exercise and go from fight or flight into a restful parasympathetic state within about three breath cycles. I really truly believe that three breaths can change the world because they can change our perception of what's going on externally by taking a moment to go internal. When you're focusing on the breath, it brings you internal versus the external chaos. And so um, I think three breaths, if we all take them before we make decisions or before we um, respond back when in, in a moment of conflict or before we're um, up to give a presentation or whatever it might be that might be causing some anxiety or angst. Um, it's just a really powerful tool. We slow deep breath cycles. So, <laughs> Thank you for sharing. That was yeah. beautiful and the easy, simple to benefit everybody to use us in their daily life when they feel the anxiety or stress, mm -hmm. you know, even just for, I think, just for a little mm, relaxation, that help our body also relax, create the gap. We, we're learning in the job us courses, true. talk about a lot gaps. Yeah. So what between the thoughts to thoughts, mm -hmm. then between our breaths to next breath, all mm -hmm. the gap give us more energy, right? Yeah. Then we can rest well, then bring the well-being you yeah. know physical or emotional even or mentally mm -hmm. yes that is a beautiful work you've done and thank you 
for help all of the people. This is, I think the world now is need your work. Mm -hmm. It's so much to help. So tell us a little bit how we can find you. So oh. where we can find you. And also I know later on after we this show, you uh, you can put some comment with you, uh, the information, then people if want to go look your work and they want to find you, then they can find you there. Sure. So what is the easy way you can speak here, then okay. let people find you. Sure. So the easiest way to find me would be at take five health. So it's take the word take the number five and then the domain is dot health um, Maria P Mays on Instagram or take five uh, take five health no dot on Instagram as well as Facebook and LinkedIn so any of those will drop you into uh, take five which is just my website where I um, one, you could sign up to become a member for like the price of a cup of coffee a month. I work with a lot of um, small businesses where they have, um, we have team packages where um, teams will purchase this for their uh, staff. Um, since I spent years in the software industry, um, you know, a lot of desk time and a lot of this business versus this. And so we work a lot on that. Um, the other thing you can do there is if you go and subscribe, you can, I once a month, I release a take five uh, outside of the paywall, meaning it's freely available and I publish it. And so there's a coherent breath that's on there that you'll find breathing practice. And so, and then it'll um, have some information too, if you sign up on subscription on upcoming courses that I'll be doing, offering, um, specifically in terms of taking your power back from anxiety and then opportunities to be coached too, if that's something that you're looking for more one-on-one -on -one stuff. So take five health um, on all the, the social media outlets and then take five dot health on the web. Beautiful, now we know where to find uh, yeah. Maria. Then. Uh, and also I wanted to, to uh, remind a little bit since how I find Maria, is Maria was to share the beautiful, the, Ayurvedic, uh, the food, the recipe, right, Maria? Yes. Oh, that, yeah. So I had um, shared, <laughs> I think on a blog post, yeah, there was a pomegranate salsa recipe, which is uh, really good. So I, the other thing that I try to do in terms of my offerings is keep them kind of light and fun because we have enough heaviness in this world. And so if we can condense them because we don't have a lot of time, but then if we also can keep it light and more, um, practical and relevant. So sometimes I'll do um, wine and uh, yoga classes, or in this case, I had taught a chakras and Chardonnay class where we did some pairings of food and wine, and then learned about the different energy centers in the body and did some breath work, of course. And so this was a salsa that I had uh, found and modified a little bit to pair with a beautiful Pinot from California. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> it was fun. It know? was nice. Uh, it was fun. So yeah, you saw my recipe, and that's how we that's how we ended up here. So I yes, that's why I was like, uh, wow, that's beautiful recipe. I said, oh, I definitely can look it. Then I look at that. Then I find your website. I mm -hmm. said, wow, that's beautiful. I think. That's what I connect with you. Then I say, come on, share this your knowledge, share mm -hmm. this things in my group. Yeah. So thank you to Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's full circle, right? There's all these different things from our nutrition, what we're putting in our bodies to how we're treating it, how we're breathing, to sleep, um, to the meditation, you know, it, it's all of those things. And so um, yeah, I'm really grateful to have shared this time with you, Ria. I appreciate it. And I have to tell you, I'll end with so my my nephews call me Auntie Rhea because they, <laughs> they, when they were younger, they couldn't say Maria fully. So they call me mm. Auntie Rhea. So I'm Maria too. <laughs> oh, that's why we mean to be. To come yeah, back. I think so. <laughs> we share the same vibration of one name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, before we close that, do you have anything you want to tell about the um, without uh, at the end, so we saw. Um, I, yeah, I would just say don't underestimate or forget the power of your breath. So when you're in a moment of overwhelm, when you're in a moment of feeling um, like your buttons were pushed, I got two teenagers, so I know about that. And um, whatever it might be, where you feel 
like you're kind of coming out of your skin or you're feeling anxious or you're feeling that fear set in, your breath is probably the most powerful tool you have. So if you can just stop, close your eyes. If you can't close your eyes, just keep them open, but notice it. Just notice where you, how you feel it, where you feel it, what the temperature is, and then just slow it down for three breath cycles and just see how that might change that circumstance for you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone. So thank you, you are listening here. So don't forget to put your comment below and you know where to find Maria. So I will see you next Tuesday. Yeah. Transformation Healing Podcast.